We're <laughs> on. Oh my goodness, I'm up. <laughs> Son of a gun. Hi everybody. Uh, Zach Gershman here. I'm sorry, it's your turn. Go ahead. Hello everybody. Welcome to another edition of Zach on Sports. I'm your host, Zach Gershman. Today, I have the privilege of being here at the 94 WIP Studios. Joining me is a five-time Philadelphia Sports Emmy Award winner, seven-time Pennsylvania Sportscaster of the Year, a greater Philadelphia chapter of ALS annual honoree in 2010. Mm-hmm. With us today is Mr. Michael Barkin. How Welcome are you, Zach? Great to see you. Good to Good call to me you. Michael, please. What's going on? What do you need? What kind of what do you have written down on the card, Zach? You have to be prepared Facts. for anything. You have to be prepared for your subject to take the whole thing over. Hi. If I took those cards, that, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to be disruptive. Might be the coffee. I'm not sure. Go ahead. Mr. Barkin yes. is a host of Philly Sports Talk, which airs on CSN, as well as the host of the Phillies and Eagles pregame and postgame live. He is also the co host of the Mike and Ike show here at the ninety four WIP studios. Very nice hey, there you go. Z. Gersh. You are a graduate of Syracuse University, mm-hmm. SI Newhouse School of Communication. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, my future university. That's a good choice, my friend. What was your goal to be a television broadcaster or a radio host like you are here? Um, I wanted to be, oh, my goal was only to initially just to remain around sports because I love sports and I think like a lot of young kids, we want to be professional athletes and then something in our brain makes us realize that's not going to happen. And so um, I realized that, that I have to kind of change my life's outlook because you, you know at an early age whether or not you got it or you don't got it. But I love sports. So I thought, how can I stay around sports? How can I put off my adulthood? How can I just not do anything but have fun for the rest of my life? And I thought, how about sports casting? And, and um, the reason I was attracted to television is because I love the show Wide World of Sports on ABC Sports, which I believe still airs on ABC Sports, and one of their taglines was uh, spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sports, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat, and they would literally span the entire globe looking for amazing sports competitions. It could be uh, ice motorcycle racing in Russia, it could be ski jumping, it could be water skiing or cliff diving, it could be any kind of crazy sport, not just the mainstream sports that we know here in, in the United States. And I thought the thought that I could be in my living room or my family room and watching this little box and I could see someone who at the exact same time was in another part of the world, halfway around the world, that enthralled me and intrigued me and I wanted to be able to do that. And so I just made that my, my goal in my life is to try to be able to do it. And then here we are, talking to Zach Gershman. Shot on by Fabio- Phil Dolitsky. Yes. <laughs> on February 11th, 1983. Yes. The region was hit with the blizzard. Paralyzed. The station you are currently working for yeah. asked you to fill in on a, on, a, on a weather report. Yes. On that day, you made your TV debut. Yes. Do you remember what was going through your mind when you realized what was happening? I got to go poopy. <laughs> I, that was really kind of <laughs> kind of close to it. What happened was is, and I and I tell I tell kids when I talk to young young, young people, um, I say that you you need to prepare for the job that you want. You need to be ready to go and and dress for the job that you want. So when I I was at New Jersey Network, now New Jersey Public Television, and we had a newscast that aired on four UHS stations around New Jersey and uh, and on Channel Thirteen in New York, WNET in New York. And we called it New Jersey Network News, but there was no weather person in the newscast. And so I dressed up every day in, a, in my little jacket and tie and, and nice slacks. Sometimes I would wear a suit. And I was the one who would get the weather information, and I would write the weather report for the anchors to read. And so on this day, there was such a huge storm that weather was the top story. And they realized, we really need someone who can, who can do a weather cast. And so they said... The, to the kid who wrote the, I was all of 22 years old, uh, check that, I was all of, yeah, 22 years old. Uh, they said, um, can you deliver the weather? And that's why I said that about, I, I needed to change my shorts, let me tell you, because I couldn't believe it. And the first thing I did was was call my parents, I'm going to be on! I'm going to be on! And, and, uh, and then I, you know, I, I gave the weather report, which was an embarrassing, embarrassing thing. It was terrible. And my wife still shows it to me when, when I won't take the garbage out. You think you're so special? Look at this. Okay? Terrible. But but it was fun. And I got to uh, do my, it was my first 
live shot on television, and that led to me doing more weather and ultimately sports. You've Next come, question. <laughs> Sorry. You've come a long way since. Uh huh. You've won many awards. Which award are you most proud of? Uh, that's a great question. I, I mean, you know, they're all, they're all nice. I think the most the the I'm not I'm not most proud of any of the awards. I'm most proud of being able to be in Philadelphia for as long as I've been in Philadelphia and, and this is a fun business but it's a tough business and it's easy for young men and women and older men and women to bounce around and if you have a family in particular and you, and you, you lose your job or you have to go to some other city and I mean imagine growing up in Philadelphia as you are you get a job and you're, you're, you're living your dream job and and then they say, well, you know, we, we, we're going to go with someone else, or we don't. You're not needed anymore. It's a tough. It's it's tough enough losing your job, but there's only a handful of jobs, really, comparatively speaking, in in any city. So if you lose the job that you love, um, then you, you might have to go to another city, and that's a difficult prospect. And I so I knock on wood and give a little canina hurrah because <laughs> because I I've been able to stay here. I grew up in Central New Jersey. And, and I, I, I've been able to, to do weather and then sports uh, at New Jersey Network and now sports here in Philadelphia. I went to Boston for five years because I, because I didn't get my contract renewed. And uh, so my wife and I went to Boston and we thought we were going to stay there forever. And then my friends from Channel 3, where I started in Philadelphia, they were in charge of putting together Comcast Sportsnet. And they said, we're putting a band back together. You want to come back? And, and I did. And it was, it's been amazing. So... But that's that's what I'm uh, I'm most proud of of really being able to to have longevity in Philadelphia. Before you interview an athlete or celebrity, what's your thought process or or preparation before you interview them? Well, you gotta you gotta research them. You've gotta you've gotta look for stories about them that maybe others don't know. You've got to uh, see if there's any connection between them and any and anything going on in your town. If 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 they're from, coming from out of town. And, um, and you need to have kind of a game plan with regard to the questions you're going to ask. Um, and and I, always, I always try to be mindful of, of uh, you know, what, where they're coming from, where they grew up. And, and, um, and you also have to be con conscious of asking why and how questions, not do you or, uh, or, or does questions questions that will be answered with a yes or a no. You don't want those. You want the questions that will that, that will be expounded upon. And those are, you know, why do you do blah, 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 or how does blah, 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 so they have to explain themselves. And um, so you just have to do as much research as you can on your subject. In 2007, you yes. interviewed Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David at yes. the US Open. And they gave you a pretty tough time. Well, Seinfeld did. Seinfeld, Seinfeld was, uh, you know, I, I asked them whether or not they would consent to do an interview during the U.S. Open, and they said yes, and uh, um, they should have just said no, um, okay. because I went out there to talk to them. It was live during the matches, and, and they're sitting together, and Larry David actually was pretty good. It was Seinfeld, and these interviews are very short anyway, so uh, when, I, when I went to interview... Um, Larry David, he was pretty forthcoming about the questions. They were both a little self-conscious about being out in the crowd because we were sitting out there in the seats. And um, so finally, I, I, they weren't really answering, or Seinfeld wasn't answering anything more than yup and nope. So I said to Larry David, I reached across Seinfeld, to, and I said to Larry David, what's the funniest thing you've ever seen on a tennis court? And Seinfeld leans in and says, not you. <laughs> so with that, I tossed it back to the booth, and I said, okay. You're a jerk, <laughs> and um, can't wait to tell you that sometime, Jerry. So go ahead. Can you recall a similar memory interviewing an athlete or a sports personality? Uh, no. The only the only other one was at the Olympics in nineteen. Uh, 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 hang on, nineteen ninety four. When I asked a I asked a real stupid question, and Dan Jansen, who was the, a speed skater for the United States, and and he had he had uh, slipped on the ice, and I asked his coach, it, I said, "Was the ice slippery?" And the coach <laughs> said, "Ice is always slippery," and that and that's why you got to be careful how you choose your words. 
and I was actually proud of myself because the, because the that interview was pre-taped, so we could have just whacked the interview. I could have said, "Look, well, let's let's not run that interview," um, but I didn't. I thought, "Okay, you know, uh, I'll, I'll take my hits on it," which I did nationally. Thank you very much, because it was a dumb question. But the point was, there were other skaters that had fallen prior to Jansen slipping, and so there was talk that the ice that the, the uh, ice does have a, a variety of temperatures, and if it's too cold, it can chip away easy, especially in the corners. And that's where he had slipped. So I probably should have said, was the ice too chippy, or was the ice, you know, was the ice quality a, an issue? So instead, I said, was the ice too slippery, or was the ice slippery? And his coach said, ice is always slippery, and walked away. Okay, thank you very much. I'm putting him with the, with Seinfeld. Outside of the sports world, you and your family and friends, you guys run the Barkan Family Healing Hearts Foundation. Yeah. Tell us more about the foundation and the reason why you started it. Well, we started it because we, we wanted to give back to the community. We kind of wanted to pay it forward. And I've, I've always felt, and certainly my wife has always felt, that if you're fortunate, that you, you, should, you should share some of that good fortune or try to help others who are in need. And, and um, we, had ha we had been having a golf tournament for years um, under other people's names. One year it was Darren Dalton, Mitch Williams, another year, and, and uh, uh, you know, it, it just didn't work out. So um, we ha had established a board, and they came to me, and they said, can we put your name on the golf tournament? And I was really reluctant to do so because I think, you know, to have a golf tournament – uh, named after you. you, your name should be Bob Hope or Dinah Shore or something like that. And I thought, you know, I, I really didn't want to. I, I really didn't want to do that. But I thought if there's any way that I could use my name to help other people, I'd be happy to. So we call it, call it the Michael Barkan and Friends Golf Outing or Golf Tournament, and it's a actually coming up. I don't know when this is going to hit YouTube, but it's actually coming up this coming Monday at White Manor Country Club. In, uh, in Malvern, Chester County. And uh, you still can get tickets for the dinner and a great band and great food, $100 a piece, at barcampfoundation.org, thebarcampfoundation.org. But what we do is we give money and financial assistance to families that have been hit by catastrophic loss, um, whether it's, it's someone's lost a job or whether someone's lost a loved one. Uh, many times they're police or fire, and because I think they give back so much to our community to keep us safe. And um, if we can just do our part and try to pay it forward, then that's what we want to do. And so far, it's been successful. We, we've raised tens of thousands of dollars and have, um, and have helped a, a lot of people. And, and, and it makes us, I, I feel badly saying it, but obviously you feel good when you help other people. So, so we're happy to do that. And um, we have a great, Mike Barnes runs the, uh, runs the, the charity along with my wife, Ellen. And, um, you know, they just say, go over here now. <laughs> okay, I want you. Go over here now. So I just try to stay out of the way, and uh, we raise as much money as we can. What has been your fondest memory covering Philly sports? Definitely the Phillies World Series title in 2008. And uh, as I indicated to you, I've had the opportunity and been blessed to cover so many great sporting events, certainly three Olympic Winter Games, uh, the, the NCAA championship in football, Final Fours. Uh, I, I've, I've been able to do a lot of things in my life, and I've been blessed to do them. But, but to see people ask, well, what does sports really bring to a city? I mean, why, uh, well, why should we have our dollars paying for sports stadiums, and, which, I, which I agree with, by the way. Um, but at the same time, I've never seen the joy in a community that, like I saw in 2008 when the Phillies won the whole thing, and the parade, and, and just the... the um, the goodwill I thought that was fostered by their championship, everybody walking on cloud nine, it was it was just a great thing, and it lasted for a while. And to be the to be the attention of a nation, um, and and the other cool thing about baseball, you win a Super Bowl, you're in a neutral site, um, and you you uh, you know you win you win NBA or NHL, or Stanley Cup, you know you're indoors in an arena. And, this is outside, you know, under the lights, on the grass. In, in, in our case, and we were lucky because uh, we saw the Phillies win it in Philadelphia. You're in your hometown. And, and so that, that, that just was the absolute greatest thing I've ever been around. You know, it was beautiful. What's next for you in your, in your professional career? Well, I want to climb Everest if I can. And, uh, of course, go to the cliffs in Cardiff. Uh, no, I, I, you know what, right now... Um, 
I don't know. You, you never want to get content, but I, also at the same time, I'm happy. One of the things I like about sports is that it, there's always a variety. And even though it's cyclical and even though we've seen the same things again and again, there's still a newness to it when it, when it happens every day. And right now we're going through the doldrums, to put it mildly, in Philadelphia sports. All the teams are underperforming. The Eagles are, are off on break before they start training camp. And so everybody's really down in the dumps. But we, it's, it's been like this before, and we, we've survived it, and we will survive. And you think about how great this town is sports-wise. And, and, and so, you know, I think there's a, a huge contingent of, of folks who think that the Eagles have very little chance to do anything special this year, but they still have a chance. I don't think you could say that about the Sixers. The Flyers are in rebuild mode, and certainly the Phillies are a ways away. But the most beautiful part about sports is its unpredictability. And a team that you think has no shot at doing anything at all can win the whole thing, especially now with all the parity in sports. So, you know, when, when you ask me what I want to do next, what I want to do next is to be able to host a pregame show and a postgame show for a team that's going to win a championship. That's what I want to do next. And, and how exciting would that be? And that's why I got into this whole thing in the first place. That's why I think you like sports and, and Phil likes sports is because, you know, you like to see the athleticism. You like to see the competition. I never got into sports to talk about the salary cap. You know, I never got into sports to talk about how, whether or not public money should be spent on stadiums. I got, on, I, I got, got involved with, with sports because of what Michael Franco did last night as we're taping this thing. Michael Franco had a five RBI last night last night, and he did so the night before that too. And to see this kid, what he's doing is so special right now. And, and that's why we got into it, because we've all played these games. We've all played basketball, all played baseball. Some of us have even played hockey. I played hockey, pond hockey as a kid. So we all have some kind of sense of what it's like to play all those sports. And to see it done at the ultimate level and to be able to marvel at it is the reason I'm doing this. You know, it's the reason I, I love it. And now it's, it's allowed me to meet guys like you. Okay, calm it down. Back it off. Uh, that's actually it. Thank We're live. Mr. We're live with Zach Gershman. Um, Thank you, Mr. Barkett, for joining me. Zach, my how, pleasure, buddy. How can people follow you? Keep in touch. Um, well, my home number is 215. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter, mbarkan, C-S-N, M-B-A-R-K-A-N-N, C-S-N, on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. Um, oh, I'm on Instagram, but it's only really for my family. Uh, where, where else? Uh, that's it. And obviously on Comcast Sportsnet right here at this fine radio station, 94 WIP. You can follow me all the time. That's the deal. And if you're you, I'll, I'll tell you where you can follow me later. Thank you again. My I'll, pleasure. And I'll see you next that's time. That's Zach. <laughs> We've got to go. I'm sorry. I'll see you next time on Zach on Sports. <laughs>